For the last 30 years, Kirby has been out there sucking up his enemies and facing the difficult decision of whether to absorb their powers or brutally spit them at high velocity at their friends with deadly consequences. However, despite the fact that there have been 1.2 Kirby-centric adventures per year over those 30 years, some people are really only familiar with his prominence in Super Smash Bros. In fact, I've never even owned or finished a Kirby game until I took on Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Dive into the role of your favorite pink puffball as he takes a gentle ride around his star-shaped world on his flying star. That is, until a star opens up in the sky and things start getting wild as hell. Kirby and all of his closest collection of puffball friends, the Waddle Dees, get sucked into the sky and end up in a wondrous post-apocalyptic land of abandoned buildings. Once you get your bearings, you'll discover some creepy-ass birds are imprisoning the Waddle Dees and just kind of leaving them wherever they want for no reason. So obviously it's your job to kill everyone and everything to get them out. Soon you'll meet Elphalin, which is whatever the hell this thing is, and you'll perform your perfectly choreographed success dance and begin your adventure in rescuing every Waddle Dee you can find. On this journey, you'll soar around the map, unlocking levels of dilapidated overgrown buildings and sifting through the colorful detritus, finding your cage friends while obliterating the locals like these cute foxes. You'll also find plenty of enemies that are slightly less cute, but when snacked upon, they'll give you trendy headwear and special powers. You can get things like swords, flamethrowers, a gun, boomerangs, bombs, hammers, and even the power of sleeping at will. All of these can be used to make your enemies way less alive, but more importantly, they're often necessary to solve puzzles and liberate those precious Waddle Dees. Each level has only one objective, find those little brown beauties. But there are also three or four collections of question marks that prompt you to figure out what you'll need to do using just your big squishy brain. The only way you'll find out is by meticulously searching every corner of the map for hidden secrets, block passageways, or just random sparkly bits you can touch that show you the way to good times. Sometimes this might require you to suck on some objects that are a bit bigger than you're used to. That's right, it's time for mouthful mode. Wrap your lips around a car to take off and blast through walls. Fill your void with a cone to spike the ground and bust open water mains getting everything wet. Or gulp down a long slender pipe so you can plow through any number of enemies. You can even swallow a load of water and squirt it out all over the place. Mouthful mode is guaranteed to leave you satisfied. Using these powers and interesting objects you can fit snugly inside your body, you'll unlock this sequential path of levels as well as optional zones where you can make use of your abilities in a time challenge. If you succeed, you'll get a handful of nearly useless coins, but if you come in under the required time, you'll get a slightly larger handful of nearly useless coins. However, as long as you finish before the timer runs out, you also get a mighty rare stone that you can use to upgrade your many hat-based skills to stronger and directly related hat-based skills. You can do things like make your fire breath into hotter fire breath or your spiked hat into an arbitrary collection of pointy garbage hat. Once you've unlocked enough levels to make it to the final boss, your army of Waddle Dees will swarm the location and, if you've rescued the massive requirement of less than half of the captured Squish Boys, they'll gently but judiciously tap their way through the barrier for you. Then you can venture into the arena and take on bosses like this giant gorilla or an especially angry tree. Once you give those big bads the business end of whatever hat you're wearing, you'll clear the impenetrable clouds of obscuring and unlock the next realm of Waddle Dee rescuing fun. Kirby in the Forgotten Land. When you make Mario Odyssey more like Kirby, you've got to make Kirby a little more like Mario Odyssey. While it is true that Kirby feels like Mario Odyssey with its mouthful mode mimicking the use of tools in the environment to solve puzzles and platforming, it definitely has its own flavor. With the variety you get from the many abilities and their upgrades in the Waddle Dee Village that's continuously built as you rescue them, giving you a bunch of mini games in the process, it's easy to feel a little more connected to the experience like it's your adventure to have rather than one you're just participating in. The only downside is that it's not particularly challenging for most of the game, even when selecting the tougher of the two difficulty levels. It feels like you have to go more than halfway through before the puzzles and objectives stop feeling like tutorials and add more layers to the challenge. Yet when it does all come together, Kirby in the Forgotten Land delivers a great experience in a vibrant and diverse world, which is why I'm giving it the abbreviated score of… good. If you'd like to see more hot takes, warm satire, and tepid commentary about video games, make sure to subscribe and check out my other abbreviated reviews.